Welcome to the Expert in You podcast, the show for professional entrepreneurs, experts, authors, speakers, coaches, and consultants who are ready to elevate their business, expand their influence, and boost their bank accounts. Join us as we dive deep with industry-leading experts who share their top strategies, invaluable insights, practical tips, and personal experiences to help you achieve extraordinary growth and success. Whether you're looking to sharpen your skills, stay ahead of the curve, or find that competitive edge, this podcast is your ultimate resource for unlocking your full potential. So tune in, get inspired, grab your coffee, and let's unlock the expert in you. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You podcast. I'm your host, Ann Carden. And I I have to tell you, I have been anticipating my guest today. I am so excited to be having her on the show. She is doing such amazing things. Jen Drummond is joining me today. Hi, Jen. Hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. And I, I have to tell you, I'm just so excited to have you on and share all of your expertise and brilliance. And so let me just introduce Jen, because she is just doing some cool things. First of all, she is an entrepreneur, but here's the kicker. She's a mom of seven. She is a mom of seven. Wow. And she is a world-class record holder mountaineer. So you know, this is going to be a fun show. So Jen, thanks for joining me today. Hey, it's a privilege. So thank you for having me. So let's talk about what it is you do now in your business and yeah. really kind of how you got here. So I'm just going to give you the spotlight and let you talk. Perfect. Well, I should probably go back to my pivot point then. So in 2018, I was in a horrific car crash that should have taken my life and thankfully didn't. And those near-death experiences have a way of waking us up and realizing, okay, if this life was over, is this the story that I want to be told? And I felt like I left a lot on the table. I was home with the kids. I had owned a finance company before and hired myself out of a job so I could be a stay-at-home mom. And there are stay-at-home moms that slay it. It was not my calling. And I just felt guilty and kind of shameful that I didn't thrive in that environment more. And so I kept trying to do more thinking that that would solve my problem. Maybe I just need to get involved more, or coach this team or do that thing. And none of those things worked. This car accident happened for me for sure. And allowed me to be like, okay, Jen, who are you? And why are you here? And what are you doing? So 2019, the year after the accident became a big year of the bucket list. Mm -hmm. What do I like? What am I interested in? What do I want to try? What am I not interested in? And I started like breaking my life into decades and thinking, okay, well, these things are going to be easier to do when I'm younger. And these things are going to be easier to do when I'm older. So museums and stuff, I'm sorry, those are decades out. I'm going to be climbing mountains <laughs> and exploring the world by foot first. And on my list was climb a mountain. 2020, mm -hmm. I was turning 40. I'm like, you know, I'm going to climb a mountain for my 40th birthday and kind of launch that next decade of success and have that be my epic way of doing that. So I was training for a mountain named Ama de Blom, which is the big, beautiful mountain in Nepal, actually still my favorite climb. Mm -hmm. And my son had heard that as I'm a dumb blonde instead of Ama de Blom. <laughs> and challenged me to climb Everest because if we were doing hard things, then I should be doing something hard like climbing Everest instead of this, I'm a dumb blonde mountain, which was <laughs> funny not at the time. And so I looked at Everest and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to climb Everest and I'm going to show him whatever our Everest is we're capable of summiting. So I call a coach, he gets me ready for Everest. And this coach tells me to buy this book about becoming an uphill athlete. So I buy this book in the front of the book is a story of a lady who got a Guinness world record. This is mm. COVID times, right? I'm homeschooling seven children. I'm about mm -hmm. to blow my brains out. I am not thriving at all. And my, I'm like, I could have done that. I tell the coach, I could have gotten a Guinness world record. My coach is perfect. I'll think of one for you. I said, okay, fine. And then he's the one who came up with this idea of climbing the seven second summits, which are the second highest point on each of the seven continents. And I would be the first woman to do so, second human ever, and kind of sold me on the concept of it was seven mountains, seven continents, seven children. It's a jackpot. How could oh I say no? Oh my gosh, that's right? crazy. 
crazy. I had never slept in a tent before. And I said, yes, to this <laughs> thing. and it was amazing. And so now that I've climbed those mountains, um, I'm working on another world record a little bit, but I go around and give speeches on motivation mm -hmm. and business building and all that fun stuff. Oh my gosh. So good. I, you, it kind of, your story reminds me a little bit of uh, Brendan Burchard, you know, Hey, I had that car accident. Car accident. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it reminds me a little bit of that. I love how you, you turned that whole situation into something super powerful. And I just believe God always moves through us and, and moves us into things that are going to make a big impact. So I, I love that you did that. So how, how long did it take you to train for your first, your first climb? Yeah. So interesting enough, I started, I decided I was climbing Ama de Blanc for my birthday and I was planning on going to climb it in May of 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, and then COVID entered in March of 2020. And so now I was training for this mountain, just not sure when we were going to be able to climb it. Mm -hmm. And luckily Nepal opened in October of 2020 for a little bit, thinking that things were back to normal. So I went to climb Ama de Blanc in Nepal mm -hmm. and then I, I loved it. So I'm like, yeah, I'm definitely doing this world record thing. This is amazing. And so then my next mountain was in South America, uh, Ojos del Salado, located in Chile. That one I started climbing in, I did December of 2020. And basically I did it because it opened because of COVID, right? Like mm -hmm. literally the mountains mm -hmm. that opened because of COVID restrictions are what I went to go climb first. Mm -hmm. And then also kept in mind that some mountains you climb at certain times of the year because that's the safest time to climb them. Right. So how long, so start to finish then it was how many months that you oh, were okay. training? Yeah. So from, well, the interesting thing is like, once you start training for a mountain, you use that fitness to go into the next mountain. Right. Right. So my first mountain for the Guinness world record pursuit was December of 2020. Okay. And I climbed Mount Logan, which was the last one. It took me a couple of times in June of 2023. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So for no, like years. For sure. Okay. So how long did it take you to climb the first mountain? What was So Ama de Blom was interesting because we had to fly over there to Nepal. And because we were mm -hmm. the first people back, people didn't know what to do with this COVID thing. So they flew us into Kathmandu and made us sit in Kathmandu for a week before they would let us go out to the mountain. They wanted to, they tested us every single day. And that's when they like did the nasal swabs that I swear wiped out your brain. Yes. <laughs> oh, so bad. Like Awful. you just, you cried, right? Yeah. So we had to do seven days of negative testing. And then we went out to Kumbu, which is where you hike in to climb. Mm -hmm. And then we did the climb. I mean, I think that trip was a little over three weeks. Okay. So yeah. the actual climb though, how long did the actual climb The actual climb, climb take? only takes about a week if you have good okay. weather, right? Okay. A lot of those just depend on weather. And how many people climbed with you in that first time? You know, like this is what I had, out? yeah, I had no idea this. So we went and there was one, two, three, four, five, six. I think there was like 10 of us on our team entirely. Mm -hmm. That was the guide and some other people included. And we were the only team. Right. There was oh, no okay. team there because of COVID. And right. so I was like, I can't believe more people don't like this thing. I mean, this stuff's amazing. <laughs> I'm in nature. No one's bugging me. Like it's beautiful country, blah, 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 blah. And as like countries started opening again and I started climbing with more people, I was like, mm -hmm. oh, never mind. There's a lot of people that are involved in this sport. I was just <laughs> No, I think it's it's super, super powerful that you have done this. And one of the things too, when you were, when we were kind of talking before the podcast, I love how you've also brought this into now you actually do these as retreats, you do climbs as retreats yes. with like high level entrepreneurs or executives, people that are really ready to be, you know, like step into their, their power really. So we'll talk about that, but I think it's really cool too, the way you've taken what your experience and what you've done, and you've also turned it into business opportunities speaking, you mentioned something earlier about being a mom, being a stay-at-home mom and how that just didn't quite sit with you. That's how my first business started as well. Well, it was kind of out of financial hardship, but part of it too, was I had left a corporate career. And so I was feeling like really as much as I loved being a mom and it's the best thing I've ever done, there was just not like, I just needed more for who I was as, 
as a person. And so I totally resonate with that when you, you kind of brought that up. How old are your kids? Let's say I, people are probably yeah. saying seven kids. So what age range? Seven kids. So I am rocking high school right now. I have okay. my senior is my oldest. I How have old? A, 17. 17. Jack okay. is 17. Then I have a, a junior, a sophomore and a freshman. So I have the full <laughs> four year covered at the high school. I skip eighth grade. I have uh -huh. one seventh grader and I have twin sixth graders that are 11. So cool. So cool. Yeah. All right. So that is such a great story. And I want to dive into some of the lessons that you now teach because you have gained a lot of lessons from this and You've learned, I know you've learned a lot about yourself and even about other people. So let's talk about some of the three main things that you talk on when you go out and speak and, and you motivate other people and really three of the greatest takeaways that I think people can get from your story and from everything you have accomplished, which is just so, wow, I just have to tell you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I think one of the big takeaways for me was big mountains mm -hmm. take big teams. Mm. And I think we set these big goals for ourselves oh, and we think we need to do them ourselves somehow. Yes, I have no idea how, but it really dawned on me when I went to go climb Mount Everest of how many people are involved for me to get to the top of that mountain. From the people at home babysitting my kids and making people are fed into soccer practices and homework's done and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. And then people on the mountain making sure that we have enough oxygen bottles and they have enough food at base camp and we have enough tents if something rips. And if we have like, there's just so much that goes into these things that allow me to climb. And you think about big businesses, right? Like how big, how many people it takes to run Amazon or right. or Delta or these different companies, they're huge teams. But even Absolutely. for us, like at home, it takes a lot of people to take your goal to the top. And so yes. I think before when I was running tired or felt exhausted, I'd be like, oh, I set my goal too big. I'm kind of a big dreamer for sure. <laughs> and now I'm like, no, I didn't. I just don't right. have enough people. And so who can I add, who can be a part of this? Who can I collaborate with? Who can I partner with that mm -hmm. lightens my load and lets me go further? Mm -hmm. And so that like pause of saying, no, I didn't dream too big. I'm just going at it the wrong way. And how do I get more assistance? Mm -hmm. So that's a big point, like big mountains, big teams. I want to dive into that because I help people build businesses. And the the first thing I I learn with them is whether or not they're trying to do it all on their own, or that they are not expanding their, you know, their mind is expanded, but they're never going to get there doing things the way they're going to do it. So I really love that you said that big mountains take big teams. That's super profound. And it's that way. Like, I even like that you brought in even at home, what it took to, to get my kids to school and to get them to soccer and all those things. Yes. Yes. It, I always say no one builds a business by themselves. I, my husband has always been a huge support. My kids have supported me in all my business ventures and other people, right? Without customers, without clients, without employees, I wouldn't have built those businesses. So I love that we're talking about this because a lot of entrepreneurs really think small and they look around and they wonder how are other people doing this? Like, how right. are they doing these big things? but it's because they're not doing it alone. And I think that I just really wanted to hit on that point because I think that's such a great takeaway for people as a lot of entrepreneurs will be listening to this. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, so good. Yeah, and so another big one, you know, it depends on the audience. I kind of have like different stories that I slide in, but one of the things that I noticed is like I committed to climbing Mount Everest. Mm -hmm. When you mm -hmm. commit to the commitment, no longer are you wasting energy on like, maybe should I quit? Should I not? Like, like if a, yes. a thought comes in that says, don't, you know, to shut that down immediately. And so you mm -hmm. don't waste energy there. And then I'm a big believer in visualizing. Like I visualize myself summiting Everest. Mm -hmm. So if I knew that I was not going to quit and I was going to summit Everest, now my job isn't to just get to the top. My job is to enjoy the journey to mm -hmm. the top. So right? good. Yeah. And so, because here's the deal, like if you knew a thousand percent that you were going to get to do the thing you're going to do, then what can you do today that makes that fun? And that just right. changes the narrative. It changes the experience. It changes the story. We were on this part of Everest called the Lotse face. 
The load safe face is like a 3,700 foot outdoor stairmaster. Okay. You are literally going upstairs, but there's no stairs because it's just <laughs> and you're exposed. There's no trees, mm -hmm. there's no plants, there's no nothing. And so if it's sunny out, the sun is radiating off of all of these surfaces and it's really warm. Like you actually want to be in a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. But if a cloud comes out because we're at such high elevation and we're on Everest, it can go like negative 20 that fast, mm -hmm. right? So it's a very uncomfortable section. Everybody, if you talk to them, like, what was your least favorite section of Everest? They'd say the load safe face. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that okay, just well, sounds a little bit like menopause. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. 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 Hot go, hot go. <laughs> Perfect. So here we are. And I'm like, okay, well, this is the load safe face. And we're getting through this section. It's not a debate. Like you can't get mm -hmm. up Everest unless you climb the section. So what can we do to make this more fun? Mm -hmm. So what we did is we took turns leading in this section. And mm -hmm. whoever was leading had to sing a song, tell a story, tell jokes, do whatever that would keep our mind off of this like 12 hour disaster that we just embarked on. <laughs> and then when that person got tired, they'd go to the back of the line and then the next person would lead and they would do their song and dance and do whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the crazy thing is, is that we bonded so much on this wall that if you asked anybody from my team, like what was one of their favorite parts of Everest, it would be the load safe face. And anybody who's been there would be like, lies, whatever. That's so cool. No, so, no, that's such a great example. And we're of like, how no, actually, can... it's true. Like, this is what yeah. we did, right? Like, this is how we made it fun. And that's so cool. if you're a business owner, you're running a household, you're doing whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not just getting the task done. Like, that's right. easy, right? It's right. like, what can you do that makes it fun or memorable or joyful or whatever? Because that changes the entire culture and environment and experience. Absolutely. I mean, attitude is just everything. It just shifts everything. So what a cool story. I love that. And I love what you what you got from that. I That is such a great takeaway for people as well. Because how many times do entrepreneurs have their their eye on the goal, but then they're miserable all the way? trying to get there. And then they get there and they're like, is this all there is? Right. Because they put so much into hitting the goal. And if you don't enjoy the journey all along the way, you're not, you're not going to love being in business. <laughs> That's just, or you're no, not no, going no, to exactly. love climbing a mountain, right? You're not going right. to. Well, and here's yeah. like to hit your point home even harder. I was on the top of Everest for 10 minutes. That yeah, exactly. That's like it. I trained 1,238 hours <laughs> for 10 minutes. If you exchange all those hours for 10 minutes, like you got the wrong formula, friends. And yes. so it's truly these goals that we set for ourselves mm -hmm. give us a compass. They give us a North Star. They allow us right. to say yes or no to things so that we get closer to the goal. But it's truly our lives are lived in its pursuit, not its mm -hmm. achievement. Absolutely. And it's also important to, I'm sure that you had milestones along the way yeah. that you were, we, oh, wow, we, oh, we overcame this. We hit that milestone or another milestone. And so it's important too, that you're setting small goals along the way so that, and then enjoying when you actually achieve those goals. That's really important yeah. as well. So somebody who's, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 34 years. I've pretty much been through everything from <laughs> you know, 9-11 as we're sitting here today, been through all of that. And if I, you know, it's not been easy. It's not an easy journey. It's blood, sweat, and tears all the way, right? But if you don't enjoy it along the way, if you don't relish in the great times and, and the milestones that you hit along the way, you're never going to enjoy it when you get to the big goal. So, right. yeah, so good that you are, that you, I love the, I love what you have learned from this. Yeah. the lessons that you have learned from this and super, super powerful. Hi, friend. I have an exciting announcement. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Expert in You podcast, but I have to ask you, have you checked out the latest issue of Expert in You magazine yet? It's jam-packed with rich content, powerful strategies, inspiring stories, and so much more to help you elevate your business and personal growth. Don't miss out. Go grab your digital copy now and join our community of experts making a difference every day. Go to expertinyoumagazine.com 
and check out your digital copy today. Transform your expertise into success with Expert in You magazine. It's not just a publication, it is a movement. All right, let's talk about setting limiting beliefs. You, I know you have done this for yourself and you teach other people how important this is. And let's just talk about what limiting beliefs are because that's a little bit of a coachy terminology that a lot of people may not be super familiar with, but let's talk about this. Yeah, I'll kind of tie it into like another lesson that I had from climbing. One of my mountains was in Russia and I had to, I went to Russia in September of 2021 and I like, it was a difficult mountain with technical skills required and all those little details mm -hmm. to give you an example. I ordered 20 pairs of gloves before I left for this climb. Oh my and goodness. Sent 19 pairs back because I needed the warmth, but I also needed the dexterity. Mm -hmm. So I wanted this glove to fit perfect. And mm -hmm. so I have all this stuff. I land in Moscow. None of my bags are there. Not one of them. Oh so my like, goodness. Oh, we don't know where they got lost. We're so sorry. Blah, 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 blah. And so my instant thought is I might as well go home. I can't climb. Like, this is crazy. This is a technical climb. None of my stuff's here. I, you know, blah, 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 blah. I've been traveling for X number of hours. And the guide was at the, at the carousel with me. And he's like, well, we'll go rent gear. I'm like, rent gear. I've rented gear before. You don't rent gear. And he's like, yeah, you, you rent gear. You go home, home, <laughs> rent gear. I'm right. like, and then like this terrible sound comes on the announcement thing. I'm like, I can't spend another minute in this airport. Let's go rent gear and figure it out. So my first limiting belief was I can't climb this mountain because I don't have my gear. Mm -hmm. And then he suggested that we rent gear. So then we go to the store and we rent gear. Okay. It's September of 2021. No one has inventory of anything because no one's shipping anything yet since this whole COVID debacle. And everybody got into outdoor activities during COVID because there was nothing else to do. Right. So there's, like everything is picked over. There's nothing. In, I mean, it's just, I'm like, really? So I rented a jacket where I had to roll up the sleeves. Mm -hmm. I had a backpack that I had to like tie a rope on so it wouldn't fall off my shoulders. I had boots that were too big that I had to wear multiple pairs of socks that were still too big, right? But like, hey, whatever. I'm going to just go as far as I can go, mm -hmm. learn as much as I can learn, because there's not a lot about this mountain in English anywhere, mm -hmm. let alone as much about it in Russian. So and I'm, I'm like, already I'm, here. And I'm already here. <laughs> right. I'm like I might as well do like the best I can. And whatever happens mm -hmm. when I come back, I'm going to be that much better prepared. So, you know, like I, I like negotiated with myself. Well, I have no clue how the world like works, but it favored us that entire expedition. And somehow we summited like less than one in seven teams that go for it, get to summit because there's so much avalanche danger and some other weather hazards that you have to watch out for. We summited. Okay. I was wearing Scooby-Doo underwear because that was the <laughs> closest thing that fit me at the store. Okay. I was wearing rental gear. I mean, nothing made sense, but no one asks you those details. Right. Me, limiting beliefs or anything that's telling you no, mm -hmm. or there's still another option. And I think too, this is a really important thing for people to think about as well is anytime there's an obstacle, our mind our, wants to automatically go to safe. It automatically wants to stop us. That re I always say there's always resistance before breakthrough, always. And I think people, if they start to recognize that and they don't let that stop them, they'll be able to do almost anything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. What a great, wow. What a great story. You have so many good stories done. <laughs> there's lots of them, yes. <laughs> so fun. But it's so great. And I think another lesson in that is, look, everything's not going to be perfect. Get over it. Right. <laughs> Make like it happen. That, like, well, here's the crazy <laughs> thing. So we like finish the climb. We get back to the airport. My bags show up. Nice of them to be of able course. to. So my bags show up. I fly home. Six months later, Russia closes because of the Russia-Ukraine war. Mm. If I did not summit that mountain. I still wouldn't be able to climb it right now. Right. Yes. And it's one of those things where you do not know your future. Mm. So just make the most of what you have available today because nothing's promised. So good. So, so good. I see entrepreneurs a lot that probably, and even people in careers, they, I think they think that they always have 
time. Mm -hmm. They always have, as an entrepreneur, they always have years. They always have years. They always have this long runway, but really our runways are short. And I see as people get older and older, they real they start to realize how short their runway really is, like to do big things, to accomplish big things. And that's why I think a lot of times you see people that are older that are more on fire to accomplish things than people that are younger, because they realize this isn't, I don't have years and years ahead of me right. Right. To, to do the thing, right? So, so, so good. Okay. I want to talk about failure. And how to overcome thoughts of failure, how to get through that. And that was one of the points that you really wanted to talk about. So you have yeah. the floor, you have the mic. I have the mic. Yay. <laughs> uh, I think failure is like on the path to success. And I have a, a crazy story from climbing on failure, right? I mean, it's real clear. You don't summit the mountain. That's a failure, mm -hmm. but is it right? Like, is it? And so here's what happened to me in 2021. I went to go climb K2 which is one of the deadliest mountains in the world, second highest mountain in the world, much harder than its sister Everest by all mm -hmm. me by all measures. And when we were on K2, there was an avalanche that took one of my teammates' lives, mm. injured one of my other teammates, and kept one of my teammates stuck on the mountain for quite a few hours because they couldn't send a helicopter to rescue him. Otherwise, the helicopter braids would vibrate and cause another avalanche to happen. So we had to wait mm. till the snow was more set before they could rescue him. And when I was on this mountain, I was asked like, hey, Jen, do you want to join this other team and go up and climb and summit? And then you'll be done with this. And yeah, you know, there's a part of you that does, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, I've spent all this money. I've been here. I don't, this mountain's dangerous. I don't want to be on it again. And there's a bigger part of me that's like, I can't. Somebody on my team just passed away and we've got problems on my team. Like I have to take care of my team. Mm -hmm. So I unclick my devices and start heading down the mountain. And I just, I'm like, you know, I have to put people over peaks. This mountain's always right. going to be here. Who I show up as matters. So I go home, you know, go down to help bury the human and do all the things that we need to do. It's a 55 mile trek out of base camp and then fly all mm -hmm. the flights home. I land in LA and I call my nanny and I'm like, I'm not coming home just yet. I need to metabolize everything that just happened so that when I come home, I'm not in this victim mentality. Mm -hmm. She's like, no, take your time. The kids are at camp. So I stayed a couple of days, came home. A couple of days later, my kids come home and one of them comes running in the door. And he's like, Hey mom, mom, did you summit? Yeah, no, I didn't, but I had success. It sounded like something. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, Hey, who we show up as people mm. is way more important than anything we'll ever achieve. And I'm proud of the person I showed up as. My son's like, okay, all right. And then he kind of runs off. And now I'm training for this mountain again and saving money for this mountain again and doing all those things. And it's time to go again. And I'm not excited about going like at all, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And I get a phone call and this of a person that I had met the year before, like, hey, Jen, are you coming back this year? Yes, I am. Like, oh, I've been training. I just don't quite have the resources to go. Can you help? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can bring some stuff over and yeah, you can be on our team. I'll make it work. It's fine. And so I go back that second year, 2022 on July 22nd, I become the third American female to stand on top of K2, which felt pretty awesome. But even you can't more, see me clapping for her if you're listening to the audio, but there you no go. Jen. She's clapping for me. <laughs> um, but even more like cooler is 30 minutes later, the first Pakistani female the first Muslim female oh, wow. on top of her country's prized peak. Oh and gosh, that gives me chills, Jen. <laughs> it does. I mean, yes. I still get like goosebumps over it. And here's mm -hmm. the thing, like for a year, I felt like a failure that, you know, I didn't summit. My team had mm -hmm. all these mistakes. Here's all the things that went wrong. I kind of ran them through my head of what we should have done different and how it could have been better and what we could have prevented and all those things. And the reality is, is that the universe or God or whatever you want to call it was using me for more and was like said, no, you know what? You're not going to do this because if you come back later and you try this again, you're going to be a part of somebody else's story. And that's going to be much more significant. And I think you need to do that. And so we failure is just because we don't see the full picture Yes, failure because we only yes. see what we see. Mm -hmm. And if we just say, okay, well, that way didn't work. I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. You will be rewarded in ways that you can't even begin to measure. Oh gosh, so good, 
I always say, you know, really our lives and our experiences are very much like a tapestry that are being woven. And until, you know, you're looking at, at this small little piece of it, right? It looks like nothing, <laughs> but right. then when it's all woven together, it's something really beautiful and profound. And I think it's a lot like that. And the stories that you're telling are a lot like that. So, oh, this is just so good. And I love the people over peaks. Actually, Jen, I have to tell you, that's the one thing that made me reach out to you oh, to yeah. invite you to my podcast. I had seen your post on LinkedIn about it and you had already been, someone had already told me about you and that I needed to meet you and they were going to introduce us. And then I started following you on LinkedIn and started reading and, and that peep that people over peaks was such a great post. Oh. And I just thought, oh my gosh, she's, I have to have her on. She's just amazing. You yeah. have just, I, I'm so blown away by you, everything you've accomplished, everything you stand for and how you are just bringing so much impact back yeah. to people and with all the lessons you've learned and how you've turned something that most people, it would just crumble them. And you, you actually just, it's like the Phoenix, right? You just rose from the I'm ashes. Like, Here's more fuel. Here's oh more Oh my fuel. gosh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So good. So many, oh my gosh. There is, there's so many gold nuggets and lessons in this podcast because you have just given gold here. Every little thing that we've talked about is something that someone can take away to become a better version of themselves, to become better in their business, to become more resilient. So Jen, I cannot thank you enough for sharing, for being here with me and just sharing everything you have. It's been so amazing. Oh, I'm just so grateful. Like, I'm so grateful to be here. Every day is a bonus day in my mm -hmm. world because it almost all ended a while ago. And I truly believe we're here to lift one another and mm -hmm. I'm here for it. So thank you for letting me be on your platform. Yes, I absolutely, I have loved it. Jen, so how, what, what do you have coming up? Let go ahead and go ahead and do a pitch, Jen. What do you have coming up yes. that you would love people to be part of? Or I do, I have this big, I climb for campaign going on right now, mm -hmm. because I think we all climb for something, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's our kids. It's a cause such as, you know, human rights or animal rights or things like that. And when we combine our collaborative energy into our individual pursuits, it allows us to go higher. So I am collecting everybody's I climb for reasons mm -hmm. and putting them on a wall in my house, which is absolutely crazy because my mom's an interior designer and can't believe I'm doing this. No and wonder you have such a beautiful background there. <laughs> yes. And I'm going to just collect all that. I'm going to take a photo of it. And on my next climb, I'm going to carry those to the top of the mountain and let us all. Oh be my gosh. That just makes my heart sing. <laughs> Yes. That so is you're so welcome awesome. to like check out jendrummond.com to learn more about that. So I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Insta. I'm like on all the channels. We all are nowadays. We'll put all her links with the show notes too. So no worries. Yeah. Yeah. That's super cool. Super cool. And you're so innovative. I love that too. That's a really cool idea and really innovative. So it's going to be fun to, oh, I'm going to keep so my eye on it. you. Yes. I'm yeah, going to keep my eye so on you. It's so fun what, what people write in and what we've been putting mm -hmm. on. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's great. And so I have one more thing for your audience. You know, life gets hard and big and overwhelming at times. And so I keep on my phone, a picture of the Milky Way galaxy going over Everest Space Camp. So anytime I just feel just overwhelmed or like life is hard, I look at that photo and it just puts things in perspective for me. I'm like, really? I'm this little human on this planet. Do I need to make this thing a big, big deal right now? Because I really don't think of the course of life it is. And it helps me just ground myself again. So if you would like that video, you can text the word Everest to the number 33777 and you'll get it on your phone. You can use it wherever you want to, but it's been my centering piece and I wanted to share it with everybody today to say thank you. Oh my gosh, that's super cool. So cool. All right, well, we will put all of that in the show notes so you don't have to memorize the links that she just gave you. We'll make sure that you can get those. And Jen, I just can't thank you enough for being here and just sharing everything that you've been through and all, all the things that you've done. and. I just wish you all the success and I know you're going to continue to impact people. And I, one thing I just have to ask you before we go. Yeah. So what have your kids, what has your family thought about all that you have accomplished? Because oh, sometimes our families are like, they're kind of just so used to it. They, oh, it's just mom or it's just, they don't think about it, but I'm curious. 
Yeah. You know, it's hilarious, right? So when the kids come over and they bring friends over, they're like, is it your mom? The blah, blah, blah. And yeah. They're, like, they're real impressed. <laughs> and then they'll be like, Hey, I want to like, I want to climb Everest. And I want to do this. I'm like, I'm here to coach you, honey. When you're ready, I'm here for it. You just let me know. Uh -huh. So it's kind of funny like that. But then also, so I set this record, right? Like I have the final climb done. I'm feeling really good about myself. I fly home. My kids meet me at the airport. And I bend down to like hug my son. And he's like, good job, mom. I'm like, thanks, honey. He goes, mom, you have bad breath. And I'm like, that's your kids, right? Like you're the superhero one second. And then you're like the normal human next second. I'm like, yeah, honey, I was on a flight for about 10 hours. I yes. do have breath. You're right. Thank you. I think they just that's keep us great. humble. They keep they, us humble. Absolutely. 100%. That's so great. So great. Well, Jen, thank you again for being here. I'm just so honored that you were here with me. And I know people are going to get so much out of this show. So God bless you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Expert in You. Make sure you subscribe to the show and share it. Get We want to get it out there. We want to get it these amazing experts that I have on my show, we want to get them out there in the spotlight, all the, the great things that they're doing and the impact that they're making. So please share it with other people and subscribe. We're trying to get the show to the top 1%. So God bless you all. And we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in today. If you're as excited as I am about scaling up your influence, business, and bank account, then I have just the thing for you. But first, make sure you subscribe to the show. Second, make sure you share it with someone you care about because sharing is caring. And third, head on over to join me in my next free virtual exclusive workshop where we'll explore proven strategies to boost your business and maximize your potential. Look, it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you're looking to take your business to the next level, my workshops are designed for you. So head on over to expertinyourworkshop.com to reserve your spot and get ready to transform your expertise into extraordinary success. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and helping you achieve incredible growth. Until next time, make sure you're always seeking the expert in you and God bless. Have an amazing day.